Okay. So let, uh, let's get started. ADF is mainly used for implementing ETL. Okay, ETL stands for Extraction, Transformation, and Load. Okay, Extraction, Transformation, and Load. So ADF is mainly used for implementing this Extraction, Transformation, and Load. Okay, and so far the same thing just a background of what is an adf here okay before this adf actually evolves the same etl process extraction transformation and load was done by some of the on premises tools like ssis sql server integration services and informatica data stage there are some tools which are used to implement the same etl process what are the advantages of Azure Data Factory over those tools are they are running on the traditional infrastructure, which is an on-premises hardware. So they have some limitations. They are not able to cope up with the big data. They don't have a connections to the cloud. Okay, very less cloud connectors. Okay, scalability is a problem. Okay. So ADF is going to overcome all those problems here. Okay. And what is an ADF is? Azure Data Factory is a cloud-based. It's available only on the cloud. It's a cloud-based data integration service, which allows you to orchestrate. Orchestration is a concept of organizing the way how to copy the data, okay? How to perform some operations, which activity has to be done first and which activity will come next. So you can decide a set of activities that needs to carry out our ETL operations here. So ADF is helping us. If you are not speaking, can you keep it on mute, please? Okay, so ADF can be helping us to implement the ETL operations, okay? And to implement the orchestration. Orchestration is a process of scheduling an activities, controlling the flow of an activities, controlling the flow of an ETL activities. And if there is a repeated activity to copy the data, for example, if I have to copy the data every day, if I have to copy the data once every one hour, every four hours, every six hours, I have an option I can automate it rather than manually performing an operations here. And ADF also has a flexibility. It's not only just copying the data, it can also implement some data transformations as well. Okay, you have an ability to sort the data. You have an ability to filter the data. You have an ability to convert the data. You can do some kind of a transformations or data processing by ADF as well. So ADF has become such a powerful tool. It has ruled out all your on-premises CTL with the help of, with the evolution of this ADF. Okay. And let us discuss about the ADF here. I'm still continuing. ADF is a cloud-based solution which is a data integration service, which is cloud-based means it was provided by Azure, okay? So no infrastructure. What are the advantages? You can go to the advantages of cloud computing, okay? No physical hardware is required. No data center is required. I'm going to get the benefits of high availability, disaster recovery, scalability, elasticity, okay? So cost considerations, I'm able to get all the, all the discussions that we have discussed in the initial class, the first and second class here, right? So since it's a cloud-based solution, I'm going to get all these advantages here. Okay, it was it cannot be hosted on on-premises. It's a data integration service. In order to implement the extraction and load process, it can connect to more than 90 plus data sources. No matter whether your data source is located in on-premises, are your data source is located on cloud, 
or your data source is located on SaaS application, whatever it may be, it has an ability that can it that it can connect to 90 plus connectors and it is able to retrieve the data from 90 plus connectors. So that is called a data integration service. It can implement the orchestration. Orchestration means, see, just like a person who controls the entire orchestra, ADF has a control over the flow of an activities. If it is a basic pipeline or basic ATL activity, it might be copying a data from one source and just dropping a data to the destination. Okay, if it is a complex activity, it has to do the activity in several steps. Hey, step one, I need to pick up the data and load the data. Step two, I need to implement something. Step three, I need to implement some transformation. So I have a sequence of activities to be carried out as a part of the pipeline implementation. So this is going to implement the orchestration like first, what activity has to go? Next, next, next. So it is controlling the flow of the activities that will be carried out using your ADF. That we can call it with the name as an orchestration. And the fourth one is automation. Okay, the concept of automation is if you want to perform the activity repeatedly, normally we have a concept called jobs to implement this repeated activity. In ADF, if you want to schedule an activity to run on a repeated basis, recursive basis, okay? I have a concept called trigger. I can schedule some triggers. Using this trigger, the same activity will be happening repeatedly here. So this is a concept of your orchestration and automation as well. So ADF has many more capabilities when compared to your on-premises ETL tools. And finally, ADF is also capable. So far, we are discussing only about extraction and load. Mostly it is used for data copying to connect to the source, fetch the data, connect to the destination, load the data. This is what we are discussing so far, okay? It is not only ADF can be used for this extraction and load, data copying operations. ADF is also capable of providing some transformations functionality as well. So this was, this was introduced a bit lately from 2018 onwards, Microsoft introduced a concept called mapping data flows. Okay, this is GUI based transformation designing. We are going to cover end to end of these transformations as well, don't worry. Okay, so Microsoft has a capability to implement the data transformations, code free transformation, no need to write any code. We can mostly take the help of a GUI to implement a lot of transformations here. We are able to write the transformations and implement the transformations using a service or a functionality within ADF that is called mapping data flows. It was introduced in 2018, but using this, ADF becomes a complete package. So before that, before the implementation of this mapping data flow, ADF is just a tool to copy the data. Okay, after implementing this, ADF has become that it has a capability to even perform the transformations as well. Okay, so this is about your ADF. What benefits I'm going to get if I use an ADF here? Okay, so since this is a cloud solution, did we remember we discussed about three types of a cloud? Okay, what are the three types of a clouds we have? We can call it with the name as as, IaaS, as, 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 and SaaS service. Okay, this falls under your PaaS services. The main benefit of ADF is this is going to fall under your PaaS service. Okay, and in cloud, mostly we will go with an option called pay as you go. Okay, and no upfront cost, no need for you to set up your own hardware, own data center. Okay, no team to manage all this hardware. Everything will be done by the cloud provider depending upon the usage of a resources, you need to pay for the cloud provider. So no upfront cost. And I'm going to get the benefit of both your manual scaling and elastic scaling. And you have an ability to scale up to the maximum resources that you require. Okay, it is implementing a concept of horizontal scaling. So there is no 
restriction that you can only scale up to this limit here. Okay, no matter whatever the volume of resources you require, whatever the amount of resources you require, you ADF can be scalable up to that limit here. Okay, and all the maintenance activities to the underlying infrastructure will be taken care of by the cloud provider and you need not worry about, okay, what patching needs to be applied, how the drivers needs to be applied, whatever the underlying maintenance of all this hardware, everything will be taken care of by the cloud provider. In fact, I'm going to get more and more benefits of ADF, like I'm going to get this high availability future, disaster recovery, okay, and all these advantages. So ADF has becoming much more tool, okay, giving much more benefits to the customers when compared to your on-premises tools here, okay? So ADF is an essential service in all the data-related activities in Azure. As I told you, this is capable of performing your data copy operations between multiple data sources and data destinations, okay? It has multitude of connectors. It can connect to more than 90 plus data sources. No matter whether the data source is located in on-premises, located in Azure Cloud, or it may be a SaaS application, or it may be a web portal, or it may be any other cloud other than Azure as well. Like AWS, Google, it has an option of connecting and to do the data integration capability as well. Data integration means it can implement the ETL using the different, different data sources. So it was called as an Heart of ETL in Azure. So this is going to perform all our data ingestion process here. Okay, so one of an important phase. If I didn't collect the data from different, different sources, I don't have a data to perform an analysis. Okay, so although I have a storage, I cannot do anything. I need the source, I need the data. So ADF is an important service, which is helping me to collect to different, different sources and to fetch the data from different sources and load the data into my destination so that I can able to start doing my analysis. So it is providing me the input to start the data analysis, to start the data processing. So ADF is called as the heart of ETL process in Azure, okay? So this is how, what is the history of Azure, uh, ADF is? ADF went into the public preview. Public preview means it was available only to few customers. They designed the project. They haven't yet released the product to the market here. Okay, so it was available only to few people. Okay, on October 28 and uh, 2014. And it was generally available, means it was available to all the public on August 6, 2015. Initially, it was come up with a version one. And then they made a lot of changes to the ADF and they released the next version, Azure Data Factory version two. The current version, what we are using is ADF version two. It went into the public preview on September 25th, 2017, okay? So this 2017 version has only the futures of extract and load. It's not capable of implementing any transformations. It's mainly used to connect to different, different sources, load the, collect the data, load the data. That's what the operations ADF is intended to. And later in 2018, they introduced a concept called mapping data flows. This is also a low CDF to perform some basic transformation activities. Transformation means I already shown you with an example. We are collecting the data in the form of an Excel or any raw format from the customers, okay? And preparing this data, which was collected in the raw format into the customer required format is the concept of ADF here. Is a concept of AD, uh, transformations in ADF. So from 2018, even ADF is capable of performing some kind of data processing and data transformations so without writing any code, there is no need of any code here. It can help you to write the code-free transformations, okay? Transformations, for example, whatever the data I got, I may be in an Excel sheet, I may be getting some huge volume of a data here. So I am 
limiting the data. I want to see only six columns in my report. I'm only fetching that six columns. I'm going to sort the data. I'm going to perform some aggregations like calculating some or an average or a maximum value, minimum value. You have to convert the data that you received from your customer into the format the user is in intended to run some reports using ADL. So I can able to perform those kind of a transformations here using the ADF, okay? In one of our class in ADF, I'm going to show you what all the different, different transformations are available in ADF, like what is split stands for, what is merge, what is aggregation, and we are going to perform some practical exercises using that as well. Okay, so don't worry, since this is a first class, I'm trying to cover what is ADF capable of, but we are we have one session, total two sessions on mapping data flows. There I'm going to show you what is each and every transformation stands for, in what case that we need to use, and we will do some practical with our existing data sets as well. Okay, so this is about your ADF journey, ADF history. Okay, so before I move to the next one, are you comfortable? Yes, sir. Any doubts, anyone, before we move forward? Uh, yes, sir, I have a doubt. Okay. Uh, like, so ADF is going to act as a bridge between data source and uh, ADLS, right? Source data that we are collecting from a users and ADLS. Right. So it is having a 90 plus uh, uh, connectivity, uh, connectivities, right? 90 plus uh, connectivities. Yes, 90 plus so data So that sources. means it is going to have the, uh, what you called, uh, like when you are going to connect with that, so we need to provide some parameters like why, where is the server? Don't, don't worry the... about it. I am going to cover. We are yet to cover all these things here. Okay. okay. We are going to discuss about the ADF components. Okay. I will components. be covering all, all the components related to ADF and I will explain everything in detail in a short while. Okay. Okay. Uh, hi, Ram, next... I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Okay, like uh, with respect to this uh, Azure Data Factory, are there any limitations with the transformations? Yes, because here we are not writing a code in implementing a transformations. Mapping data flows help us to implement the basic transformations only. Okay, it's based on GUI. So it is giving you a list of transformations. Okay, but still we are not able to get the same amount of transformations we will be doing using Azure Databricks or Azure HD Insights because that is completely code-based transformations. So whatever the way you want to transfer the data, you have an option. You can write a code and you can do that. And that supports multiple languages. But whereas this mapping data flow, it's a code-free, Although it supports a basic programming like Python or a Scala, but still it is limited. So what I can say is, if you want to implement a basic transformations in your project, but these are good enough to cover most of the work that we are doing with transformations for a small and a medium projects, you can implement mapping data flows. If you want a transformations at a large scale, very high level of transformations, then it's better. You can do the same transformations using Azure Databricks or Azure HD Insights. All right, thank you. Okay, but it is serving yeah. the method of implementing a transformations and up to some level of a transformations, we can do it because we are not including the, we are not performing a transformations with much of a code. Okay, a basic level to medium level of transformations can be done using mapping data flows. But if you really want to implement a high level of transformations, then it's better if you want to feel like I need more control, okay, more command, then you need to write your code. That should be done by implementing another technologies like Azure Data Factory, uh, sorry, Azure Databricks and Azure HD Insights. Databricks is advanced one. Uh, you're telling like a, a GUI, which means kind of a dra drag and drop? Drag thing? and drop, yes. It's a drag oh, and drop. Okay. Like uh, related to Informatica, something like? Something like uh, SSIS, you, you were aware of SSIS, right? Yeah, same thing related to Informatica as well. Like you can easily put the mappings and all. 
mostly it's related to ssis okay okay thank you thank you very much so far the data is used to collect the data from different sources and uh, to load in from ADLS or ADLS. But transformations also is included. In yes, even for data. transformations, you need to see you cannot perform a transformation without a data, right? So you need to collect the data. So you have to collect to the source where your source is located. See, once you collect the data, then you can implement a transformation. Once your source data is ready, then you can implement a transformation. Right? So even for implementing transformation also, the first step, okay? See, this is a sequence of steps. That's a, that's what your orchestration called. First step, I may need to collect the data, okay? Load the data. That's what your ELT stands for. The next time I'm going to do discuss about this. And once the data is loaded, this is extraction source, collecting the data, load the data into your ADLS or some storage, and then I am implementing the transformations here. So if you want to implement a transformation, first you need a data. Without a data, you cannot implement a transformation, right? So even if you want to implement a transformation, you need to get that data. Clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So any other doubts or shall I proceed? Uh, sir, uh, like uh, most of the people are like uh, selecting uh, Azure or like Databricks. So, I mean, what based on based on uh, their comfort they are... level and their complexity level of implementing the transformations. Both uh, can do uh, the same functionality. Okay, yeah. it's up to their comfort level. I mean to say that if it is small requirement, then they will go for uh, data factory. Uh, if it is not, I see actually. That decision you can only make once you are comfortable with Data Factory, Databricks, and the Synapse. Okay. Okay. The reason why I'm saying this is every technology, although I can say that ADF can do transformation, you Databricks can do the transformation, even Synapse can do the transformation. <laughs> but depending upon a lot of futures that you are getting, the in terms of infrastructure. Okay. Here mapping data flows creates a virtual machines which mm -hmm. is not good, okay, when we are doing a transformation. Databricks has given you multiple compute options, creating Spark, Spark pools. That was too much powerful and performance-wise, it was good. So first, without knowing this, you cannot make a decision, okay? So if you want to decide what needs to be used, first you need to un go with an underlying concept. If you can, you can do the same processing with multiple options. If you go with Synapse, yes, you can apply the transformations in Synapse as well. Synapse can give you an ability to use SQL pools, ability to use Spark pools, okay, ability to give serverless. So first you should know what benefits each and every service is giving me, okay? Then you can decide which one is best for me. So that decision you have to wait until all the modules are completed. This is too early to make a decision what is best. Even I cannot say this is best for you. Depending upon the load of a data that you are doing and depending upon multiple options, you have to choose what is the best for you. But uh, if if, if uh, Databricks is better, I mean, it's having a, a more features than uh, Azure Data Factory, still it is in the past, you know, it is serving as a past. So what is the use of this thing? Every, every tool has its own functionality. This is mainly designed to extract the data from multiple sources. Okay, Databricks cannot do that. Databricks is only used for implementing transformation and processing. Okay, okay. every tool has its different purpose. Okay. okay. So let, let us continue. The next topic is about ETL and ELT. ETL, okay? This is the conventional, traditional approach that we have been following from over a decades. Okay, what we are doing is most of the time, whatever the data that I am getting is the same, same structured data. Okay, at the time the data sources are mainly the SQL Server, Oracle, most of them are the RDBMS. Sometimes it's a flat file, sometimes it's a CSV file. So I'm going to deal only with the limited sources of a data here. So I'm going to extract the data, do the basic transformations as per the customer requirement, so at that time, there is no data science. 
no artificial intelligence. People are using this data for performing data analysis, implementing BI, the business intelligence, data-driven decision-making to see the data insights. So all this can be done on a structured data. So we are collecting the data. Since the data is already structured, you are limited with very less number of transformations that you can perform and we can load the transformations into in another data warehouse where the data analysts, okay, the business intelligence people can connect and perform a transformations. So there is, might not be a need for you to write a longest or a complex transformations or although you write a complex transformations, those are the fixed transformations. No need for you to do, change the transformations code regularly. Okay, no need to change the transformations or implement the transformation dynamically as a user requirement change. Most of the time, once the user gives you a requirement, that's a requirement we are going to follow. It is not going to change drastically that much. Nowadays, the cases are different. The data was not only coming from structured sources with the implementation of big data. Okay, how what is the difference of big data? How you can classify the big data with three V's, V's right? What is the first V? Velocity. Velocity. Right. Velocity. Volume. 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 Variety. And variety. Variety of a data. First thing to start with variety. I may be getting a different different varieties of a data. It may be a structured data, unstructured data. I can pull the data directly from a website. It can be a web page, audio, video, CSV file, text file, PDF document, Word document. I may be getting a data in a different different formats, right? So here my sources can be unstructured and structured. If it is unstructured, I need to convert the data into a structured, first of all, okay? And here, the velocity of a data, okay? Whenever I am using SSIS, most of the time, whatever the loads that are scheduling, the load may be running once in a day, or twice a day, or thrice a day, or every four hours, six hours, that's it. But nowadays, people want to see the real-time data. If you make any changes on the source, the change should happen on the destination immediately, the next second, so that they can able to always get the latest form of a data here. Okay, that you can take an example. While you are booking a product, while you are um, uh, traveling somewhere using a Uber, okay, or riding somewhere, you can track the distance, where are we? Okay, and while you order a food, you can track where that person is, how long will it take? You can see the real-time statistics. So whenever you want to see the real-time data, you have to implement that velocity as well. And volume, as I told you, the data volume has been drastically changed. Initially, it was in several MBs, KBs. Now it was drastically increased up to several terabytes of a, uh, several exabytes of a data here. So now that mechanism was a bit changed. Earlier it was ETL. Nowadays, we are calling it with the name as ELT. So what is a CLT first? Extracting the data from variety of sources of a data. First, load the data into your Azure storage. What is the cheapest means of Azure storage to store all the unstructured data? ADLS. 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 First, load the data into ADLS. Then apply the transformations, ELT. Then apply the transformations. And once the transformations are done, Processing is done, then load the data into data warehouse. Okay, previous approach is different. We are only getting a structured data, do the transformations as per the customer requirement, load the data into SQL data warehouse. So since it is structured, there is no need for you to store the data separately again in an ADLS. But now with the evolution of big data, my data is not structured. I may be getting different varieties of a data here. So I have to collect all this data and load the data into one Azure container here, Azure storage, which is your ADLS. So nowadays, whatever the projects that we are implementing with big data, it is called as an ELTL, okay, or ELT simply. We can, with three words, we can call it as ELT. But in fact, if you see the flow, it is extracting the data from variety of sources, load the data into ADLS, the unstructured storage, first of all, and then it will implement the transformations. And once the processor data is done, 
it will load the data again into a data warehouse here. Okay, so transformations after loading the data, once the data is loaded, so it is supporting the flexibility of implementing your data science, machine learning, data analysis, business, in, business intelligence, data insights, you are capable of doing multiple operations because the transformations are done after you store the data here. So currently, whatever the projects, the big data projects that we are working, it's no longer an ETL process. We are following a process called ELT process here. We are extracting the data, load the data into Azure storage, first of all, and then I'm doing the transformations. And here the problem is the user can change the transformation dynamically. Hey, I want the report right away. And in order to generate a report, you need to find out what sources are available for me. Okay. So most of the time, the data engineering role is the user may come up with you today, say that I want to see the employee performance with respect to, to uh, from past three months or six months. Based upon that, maybe I need to announce some bonus for this new year. So this is a today's request. Okay. So immediately I need to go to my employee table. I need to find out what are the key performance indicators for a particular employee. On what basis we are measuring the performance of an employee? Is it his attendance, his working hours, his recognitions he got, major achievements he got? So I need to search all the things within the data the, that was available in an employee table here. So what is this ELT? The ELT model stands for is the user may always come up with a last moment or any time. And he wants you to say that, hey, I want this report. Okay, if you want to generate that report, you need to see whether all the columns required to generate the report is already available or I need to convert some of an existing information into a scale or into my required values to generate that report. So transformations can be done on an ad hoc basis or a dynamic basis. This needs has been changed drastically with the implementation of a big data. Earlier, it's not the case. There is always a fixed flow here. Whenever the user asks, this is a request, this is a report I'm doing, we already have a source and using the source, we are implementing that report. But now, all the many of the requirements has been changed and the customer is always coming up with different, different requirements. And still, we should be in a feasible, we should be in a position to meet the customer requirements here. Okay, so transformation after loading, Designed for agility. Did you understand now what is the design for ability is? Anytime the customer can give you any kind of a requirement. So you should be always in a position to deliver that customer requirement. This is an example that I have shown you. Okay, this is the difference between your ETL and ELT process. Azure Data Factory is capable of implementing both for you. Either you want to implement ETL or you want to implement ELT. Azure Data Factory can help you to implement both. Okay, so did you understand now, right? What is the difference between ETL and ELT? But nowadays, majority of the projects that we are working on are the ELT projects only, okay? And I'm just giving you some basic in-depth of your existing technologies versus ADF. Okay, many people are migrating to ADF. So you need to think of what we already gave the benefits on a generic basis, high availability, cloud benefits, scalability. We discussed about all these things, but with specific to the ETL process, what are the other benefits I'm going to get while migrating to an ADF here? Okay, so comparing the biggest competitor for ADF is SSIS, which is on-premises, which is a conventional tool that I have been using more than 20 years. Okay, but what makes us to go for an ADF now? Okay. So it is doing more code-free transformations. SSIS is, as someone asked Informatica, I'm not sure much about Informatica, but I worked with SSIS. SSIS can be done mostly through GUI, okay? It's like a drag and drop activities most of the time. You can build the sources, destinations, you can implement some data flow activities, okay? So like that, I can implement SSIS packages. So there is no need for you to write the transfer code while you are performing your transformations here. Similar way, we can implement the same in 
mapping data flows as well. Okay, but ADF can give you a much more flexibility. If you want to design the pipeline ETL or ELT, you can do that. You have an options to implement some transformations using code free. And it even supports some coding as well, like uh, Python and Scala languages. You can write the code using Python and Scala if you want. Okay. And it has on-premises connectors. Most of the time the SSIS is working, it is connecting to a structured sources, RDBMS. Okay. Na can you name some RDBMS? SQL, SQL Server, Oracle. So it is having a structured data. Okay. Flat files, CSV files. It has a very limited connectors, around six to eight connectors, not more than that. Okay. But ADF has, as I told you, this is a major complexity. Nowadays, with the evolution of cloud, I may be getting so many types of a data here. It may be an RDBMS, NoSQL databases, okay, uh, storage, uh, like the cloud storage services, SaaS connectors, different types of cloud applications. So I may be getting a variety of a data, and the data sources are in different, different locations here. Okay, so ADF is giving me much flexibility. It has very high scalability. Whenever I say on-premises, I'm storing, I have to create a server. I have to install SSIS on a server. I need to purchase a license of operating system, SQL server license for using SSIS. Okay, and I need to provide the underlying computing power, number of CPUs, amount of RAM, storage disk, and I need to install, uh, I need to hire a lot of people, data center admin, Windows admin, MSBI developer, admin, database admin, to maintain all these things here. But comes to the ADF, it's straight away. I can go to cloud, fetch the service. Okay, do you really think about the hardware data center now? If you want to use ADF? No, sir. No, no uh, what I can do is I can directly go to Azure portal, get the service and the service is ready within five minutes. I really no need to bother about my data center admin, network admin, storage admin, database admin. My ADF service is ready to be available here. Okay, so this is one of an advantage we have. And whenever I'm using an on-premises, always my challenge is infrastructure scalability. As we dis discussed yesterday, two types of scaling is there, vertical scaling, horizontal scaling. Whenever I say vertical scaling, I have one server on which I installed an SSIS. I'm doing a lot of loads using this SSIS. I'm running the package multiple times. So it is picking up the loads. All my CPU has been consumed. All my memory has been consumed. So what are you going to do in this case, General? What you can do? We'll try to increase it. I'm trying to increase it to the next level. Next if, level. If again, that is full, means I'm going to add more resources to it. And what if, if that is full again? Up to maximum, what? we can increase. We can increase again. Okay, we, we can increase again. But that increase can be done only till your hardware supports. In my hardware, suppose if I don't have a flexibility, to add more number of resources, okay? My RAM slots are full. My CPU is maximum. I cannot increase more than that. You cannot do anything, okay? So this is a major limitation here. I cannot go beyond this point. So in order to avoid this, ADF is implementing horizontal partition, with, uh, automatic scaling, horizontal scaling. Means it gives you a server, normal server, not a powerful server like this. If this is full, I give you another server with same configuration. If this is full, I give you another server with same configuration. If this is full, I'm going to give you. I You can really add up to hundreds and thousands of a server to your existing infrastructure at ease. Okay, no need of any downtime. Okay, it will, whenever there is a requirement, it will keep on adding the number of a servers. Whenever you don't have a requirement, it will take away the number of a servers. This is called auto scaling. Okay. So it is highly scalable. So whatever the amount of resources you want, ADF is capable of getting all those resources in the form of 
some small servers. This is cheapest hardware, means for one server to use at a high configuration, I need to purchase a powerful resources, but this is a commodity hardware, means I can able to use a basic server with four CPUs and 16 GB of RAM, and I can increase the number of basic servers, so your cost is very, very less. Okay, although I'm using more number of resources. So very high scalability, first point. And connectors, SSIS cannot connect to the cloud, but here to ADF, I can connect to the cloud and I can connect to the SAS connectors. As I told you, more number of connectors than any other data integration, than any other data integration service here. Okay, that is called your cloud and SAS connectors. And here we have an option of implementing the event-based trigger. Trigger, I told you, what is a trigger? What is the purpose of implementing a trigger? Uh, to schedule any ADF changes. Right. I create a pipeline. I want to run this pipeline every one hour. Do you want to do it manually or we have an option of implementing a schedules? We can automate it. Right? So event-based triggers are whenever there is a new file comes to your ADLS account, okay, it immediately performs some action on that. Whenever a file was added, whenever the file was modified, whenever you are doing some transformations, you can implement this event-based operations as well. Okay? And ADF is also capable of running your SSIS packages. Some people, they are taken out the on-premises completely. Most of the organizations, they are migrating to cloud. Okay, but I have some SSIS packages. If you are not speaking, can you keep it on mute? Please? Okay, so some people, their environment, they are completely migrating to the cloud. The backend databases, sources, destinations, they are already migrated. If you have a server, which is having SSIS, the first option I'm trying is, hey, let us migrate this SSIS package to ADF pipeline, convert this. Okay, convert to ADF pipeline and run it in ADF. That is one option. But this SSIS package is so complex. This was designed by some developers. He left the organization now. I'm not sure how to migrate the code of an SSIS package into ADF pipeline. I tried, but I am failing continuously. Okay, I don't want to do, I don't want to break the functionality. But my company is saying that no more on premises for you. We have decided by this December, everything should be on the cloud. Many companies has given a deadline like this. Okay, I don't want you to keep anything on on-premises. I don't want to pay for any licenses anymore coming, starting this new year. Okay, so in that case, if you are left with no option, so ADF can save you in this option. What I can do is better migrate this package to ADF. And I can keep it as SSIS, no need to convert into a different pipeline. I can keep it as the same SSIS package in ADF. I can still run the SSIS package using cloud hardware. No more infrastructure is required. Even in our topic, I'm going to show you one class, how to migrate your on-premises SSIS packages to Azure Cloud as well. Okay, full-pledge ADF consists of these three things. Implementing the data flow activities, data transformation, and SSIS solution, okay? So IDF has much more flexibility when compared to your SSIS packages. It's far more better than SSIS or any other conventional tools. That's why IDF has taken, where IDF has chosen as the first priority for all the data engineering projects that you are going to implement from now, okay? So this is about your IDF. And then, as I told you, how ADF can be chosen on your Azure ecosystem, okay? On your project. ADF can be used for data migrations, right? So if you are running any kind of a packages, migrate the packages into, convert the packages into ADF pipeline and migrate to cloud, okay? So you can run all the packages on, in the form of a pipelines on ADF and implement the same ETL operations on the cloud okay and the next option you can even work with i told you two types of a ingestion what are the two different types of ingestion we have data ingestion 
batch mode batch and stream batch mode and stream mode okay ssis those kind of activities are mainly limited to the batch mode they are not able to support the stream mode data ingestion but adf is also capable of implementing given stream mode data ingestion live data processing okay using uh, some event hubs using some kafka you are going to get a live data from different different sources to your destination so at that time we can implement adf is capable of implementing that streaming process as well that real time data streaming using this adf and as i told you adlf can adf can also be used for implementing a code free transformations using a new feature in adf called mapping data, data so adf can be used for multiple purposes okay adf can also be used for running your ssis packages as well adf can also be used for running your ssis packages as well so adf has multiple functionalities okay and coming to adf i think i covered this yesterday just a quick recap if you are planning to implement an adf adf comes like this it was available in two versions version 1 version 2 and the latest one is adf v2 which is called as an version 2 okay and if you want to build an adf pipeline i can able to create an adf pipeline using multiple options i can use a azure portal through gui i can easily create a pipeline and perform an operations apart of using a gui which is a easiest and comfortable process if you are a person who don't like a gui who always works with code command line interface you can still work with your etl operations of adf using your powershell scripting dotnet scripting python scripting rest apis and arm templates azure resource manager templates there are multiple ways you can interact with your adf to implement your pipeline related activities okay highly integrated adf can be integrated to other azure services we have 600 plus services in azure right so adf can be implemented to other azure services like devops key vault azure monitor azure automation and so many other services here very very easily you can able to integrate with all the other services okay like i can integrate with azure blob azure adls okay azure data breaks these are all the data related services but other than this data related services there are much more with respect to to your monitoring services security services so adf can easily integrate with all these services to implement the better security automation manageability of your services here okay and adf will never store a data it is passing a data it is collecting a data loading a data but it will never store the data here it has to persist the data by the end means whatever the pipelines that you are designing it has to collect the data from a source and it has to load the data into some destination so destination can be an adls destination can be at azure sql database table you have to leave the data in the destination and while transferring the data from one source to another source it is implementing a lot of network security standards that will be followed by using your tls what is tls stands for transparent uh, no, transport, transport layer security transport, transport, transport layer, layer security okay. and what is the current standard for implementing tls 1.2 right 1.2 tls comes in see earlier version of tls is ssl once upon a time whenever we open a website it says the ssl certificate is not available something like that right so earlier we used ssl secure socket layer but that was hackers know how to hack that they bypass that protocol to hack your websites or critical data so they came up with the latest technology now is tls transport layer security so it comes in three versions again 1.0 1.1 and 1.2 here we are following the latest tls version that is 1.2 okay so your data whenever the data was transferred across a network your data is secured because we are implementing the security standards wherever it is possible to implement encryption of a data while it is while the data is transferred on a network that is about your tls connections 
okay and let us move to components before that let me go through it once so is the problem to everyone or are you able to hear me yes so maybe this answer is to that okay. so let us go to the components of adf now what are the different if i have to implement a data flow activity data flow means copying a data from the source and copying the destination if i have to implement a data flow activity what are the major elements that i have to achieve that i have to configure for working with the adf okay see whenever you are planning to work with adf there are total six components that i need to work with an adf okay first i need to create a pipeline pipeline is a collection of activities here okay activity means i'm saying copy the data that is one activity if you have a collection of activities all the activities will be scheduled or um, orchestrated one after the another so that i can call it as a pipeline so we have a collection of activities which is called as a pipeline and we are measuring all the activities in the form of a pipeline in adf okay if we got a ticket or we got some request from a user to create a pipeline and then you need to decide pipeline is a main thing okay as a unit of work in adf and in order to implement that you need to understand now what is a customer requirement was he looking for a transformation was he looking for a data flow activity okay so activity is a second step activity is what is a user requirement that he asked me to perform is it a data flow is it a data transformation what is actually requesting for that we can call it as an data flow okay that is called as an activity here collection of activities become a pipeline collection of activities becomes a pipeline okay and pipeline is a collection of activities activity is in each and every individual step that we are carrying out to meet a customer requirement here example copy the data load the data these are all the activities here and then we have a data sets okay we are mainly using it for etl process etl means i need to have a source i need to have a destination so what is the type of your source a csv file where is your csv file located is it in a disk storage on premises is it in a blob storage cloud okay is it in an adls storage is it in a website is it in a http protocol so i need to specify what is the source what type of data is available in that source okay that is called a data set data set means the source and destination of your data i can call it as a data set okay maybe at this time you don't get an actual meaning of each and everything but if you practically start implementing few pipelines it is much much easier you will came to know more about the pipeline activities here you will easily understand because we have to create the data set we have to create the linked service data set activity since you are doing everything practically it will be much easier for you to follow all these concepts here theoretically you may find a bit difficult but the same definitions if you came to learn if you revisit once you did it practically it is much much easy for you to understand this data set data yes, set sir. is nothing but <clears throat> you, you were asking something yes sir sir if adf is not storing the data uh, if we require anything now how can we recover anything from adf so from adf you, you can never it. recover anything adf is just a pipelines okay it consists how to connect to the source how to connect to the destination either my data can be stored in the form of a destination here it's a pipeline see let me tell you here so we cannot recover any ticket also uh, recover in the sense i didn't get you what what you are saying here see this is my source okay which is a blob storage for example i have some files stored in a blob storage i'm creating a pipeline a copy the data from this blob storage and load the data into an azure sql database this is my database in the form of a table okay 
maybe if you want, you can do some transformations or you can directly copy the data to an Azure SQL database. So your data is already stored there. Whenever you want, you can always fetch this data from the database. ADF is facilitating this data flow only. It will not store any data. Your, state, your data is still available in a file format in ADLS or a blob storage in a table format in Azure SQL database. So whenever the user wants, they can either fetch the data from here or they can either fetch the data from here. ADF will not store any data. ADF functionality is just to copy the data from here to here. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, so ADF will never store any data. The main functionality of ADF is EL, extract the data, connect to multiple sources, get the data, load the data by connecting to multiple sources. So its process is always collect the data, load the data, that's it. It is not going to store any data. But wherever you store the data, from there, whatever the data you want, you always have the data located there. You can go there and fetch the data. It's not a storage. The storage is something else, okay? Storage is something else. ADF is connecting to that storage devices, collecting the data based on your requirement, okay, and load the data. So whatever your requirement is, you can go to that location and work with the data. Okay, say today I got one file, for example, it copies the data here. Tomorrow you got an addition to the file, the data is modified, it can mod copy the modifications. Tomorrow you got 10 files, it can copy the 10 files. So this file, whenever it is changing, the pipeline can help you to modify the data, but it will not store any data here. If you want your data, either you have to access from here or you have to access from here. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Yes, yes. Okay. So ADF is just a kind of a pipeline which facilitates your data movement to copy the data from the source and load the data to the destination. But it will not persist any, any data. Okay. So it will be always available. The data will be always available in the source and destination. So you can go and fetch the data from the source and the destinations here. So this data sets are those source and the destination. Data set may be my blob storage. Data set is my Azure SQL database, a table in Azure SQL database. I can connect to the blob storage for collecting the source data. I can connect to the destination for collecting to the Azure SQL database here, okay? Okay, so this is about a data set. So like this, I can able to connect to multiple data sets here in ADF. Okay, while you do the practical, you will come to know more about it. At this point of a time, don't feel like confusing. Once you do at least one exercise, you will come to know what is a data set, linked services, and all these things here. Okay, I'm trying to give you the best, like what is a data set in your own terms so that you can easily understand. But if you don't understand now, that's still fine. We have, while creating practically, while doing the first exercise itself, you came to know with an examples here. Okay, since you are doing it practically. Data sets are nothing but your source and destination of a data. In order to implement the extraction and loading, I need to connect to the source. So what is the type of a data that you are dealing with? Where the type of a data is stored? In which format the data is stored? That is called your data set. Okay? And then linked services. Suppose I have a SQL database. Can you connect to the database without any credentials? Our, our example, let, let me keep it very simple. We have an ADLS storage account. I have a file in ADLS. Will ADF connect to that a a ADLS directly? Or there are some security mechanisms, how to access your ADLS account? What are the security mechanisms we have? Uh, like by connection strings. Uh, right, <clears throat> connection strings, one option, one very good. Keys. Access keys, second option, keys. very good. SAS. Under SAS, SAS keys, AD authentication, ACLs, access control list. Okay, so there is some way. You cannot access the data directly until and unless you implement some kind of a security mechanism, right? So linked service is how we are accessing your storage. Similarly, if I have to connect to my Azure SQL database, I need the details. 
how you are connecting to SQL from SSMS. I need to specify the server name, database name, login account, password, protocol, port number. The collection of information is required, which facilitates my connection to the database here. Okay. So linked services are nothing but what are the credentials you required to connect to your source, to connect to the data set. Okay. Source and destinations of where your data is stored, how to access that, and then I can able to fetch that. So first you need to create a linked service. Either it can be a connection string, or it can be an access key, or it can be an AD authentication, or it can be a SAS key, whatever it is. You need to define the way to access that component, the way to access the data set where my data is stored, where I need to copy the data, where I need to load the data, I need to connect to both the source and the destinations. So linked services will establish that connection for you. Okay, data set is your original source and destination of a data. Linked service is the way that I can access the source and destination that I can call it with the name as a linked services. Okay, and then integration runtime. What is the meaning of integration runtime is? Can you tell me what is an integration runtime? Any idea or I will cover, don't worry. If you want to perform any activity, I need a power, computing power, in the form of CPUs, memory, I/O. Okay, even in your laptop, if you want to perform some operation, tell me whether these resources are using or not. CPU, yeah, memory, I/O. Yeah. Right. Without this, I cannot do anything. Right. Even here, I want to copy the data. What is the volume of data that you are dealing with? Sometimes it was in few MBs. Sometimes it was in few terabytes. I need to copy the data from a source to destination. For performing that activity, for dealing with the data, I need a resources. So integration runtime is a parameter that helps you providing that necessary resources. In ADF, the unit, the collection of CPU, memory, IO to carry out the, your operations will be provided to you in the form of DIU. DIU use a unit. DIU stands for data integration unit here. Okay. Data integration unit. And your charge, pay as you go, right? Depending upon your usage, you have to pay to the Microsoft. So your charge will be based upon the DIUs only. Okay. These many number of DIUs I have used. I have used 100 DIUs. So for 100 DIUs, this is your bill. Okay, for 1000 DAUs, this is your bill. Okay, so number of times I run, say one time I run this pipeline to copy the data from here to here, it consumed two DAUs for me. If you repeat the activity, what happens here? Four DAUs. For four DAUs, I have to pay. So on a month, it is going to calculate the total number of a consumption, total number of DAUs that you consume, and you have to pay for the number of DAUs here. Okay, so integration runtime will establish the computing power for carrying out any kind of an activity, no matter whether it is a small or a big activity. And you have an option of selecting how many number of DUs are actually required to carry out your operation. Okay, and you can also implement auto scaling. Auto scaling means let ADF decide. In order to copy this data, how many DAUs are required? Let ADF decide. ADF will decide automatically, hey, for this, I need 12 DIUs. You can you can enable 12 DIUs. Or you want to manually say, use only four DIUs. Then it, it might take long time. Using four DIUs, it will copy the data. Okay, so you need to go with a manual scaling or an auto scaling. You have the flexibility of selecting it. But in, DIUs will be provided by this integration runtime. So the next parameter is your integration runtime. It's a computing power. Okay, and finally, I told you trigger. Trigger is for scheduling. Right, for implementing automation, we can use triggers. Okay, for implementing automation. As I told you, I created a pipeline today. It copied the data one time. If I have to repeatedly copy the data every one hour, are you, go ahead, are you going to manually execute the same pipeline every one hour? Do you have that bandwidth? 
No. No. I'm going to automate it by using this process called an triggers. Okay. So this is a concept of triggers. Okay. And I'm just giving you some, generally we don't need it, but if some people are already familiar with ETL, okay, they can understand quickly <clears throat> here how they can relate. Okay, here we are calling it with the name as a pipeline, a data mm. flow operation. In SSIS, they are calling it with the name as a package. Okay. Here we are calling it as an activity. In SSIS, they are calling it as task. Collection yes. of task is package. Collection of activity is a pipeline. Okay. Mm -hmm. In SSS, we are calling it as a connection manager, how to connect to the source, how to connect to a destination. Here we are calling it as a linked services. In SSS, we are calling it as the source and the destinations. Here we are calling it as a data sets. Okay. They have a different name like source and sync in area. We are calling it the destination with the name as sync. In SSS, we are calling it as source and destination. Okay. In integration services once the package is created you can store that package in the form of dts yeah. dtsx and uh, dtsx mostly earlier version is we are storing it in dc dts wow. latest version is we are storing it in the form of dtsx DTS a collection of dtsx <clears throat> we can call it as uh, is pack integration service deployment file something like that but here we are storing all the adf pipelines in the form of json Okay, so this is just to add up to the terminology. It doesn't make much sense. If you are comfortable with your traditional packages that you are using, SSIS tool, if you want to compare everything while learning ADF, it will be easy for them to adopt to this terminology here. Okay, so for that purpose, this slide was added. And these are all the components that we discussed so far. So if you want to implement an ADF pipeline, these are all the things that we are going to implement in ADF pipeline here. Okay, for example, here I have an activity to copy the data, okay, from one source to another source. Okay, these are all my sources and destinations. Okay, so first, if I have to connect to the source, I need to create a linked service. My source is a HTTP here. My source is a storage account. My source is a synapse. Okay. So first of all, I need to establish the connectivity, linked services, how I can connect to the data set, which is located in my web portal. How I can connect to my data source and the destination, which is located in Azure storage account. How I can connect to my destination table, Azure SQL data warehouse, which is located in Synapse. So linked services are a connection strings. Okay, how I can connect my SQL data warehouse. How I can connect my Azure storage account? What is a URL? Okay. What kind of authentication do I need to use? Connection string, SAS key. So I have to mention everything in the form of linked services. And once you connect to the storage account, for example, your data was organized, right? It was in the form of what is a hierarchy? Account? Inside the account? Containers. Containers, first Containers. of all. Yeah. Containers. <clears throat> Inside the container, files. Database. Inside the container, folder, files. 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 If it is a database, for example, then you should have some server name. Inside the server, it's a database. Inside the database, tables. Table. Table. Then you can access. So you need to mention the data set here. I am not going to access an entire database. I am not going to access the entire server. It should be in phases, right? So you have to mention that hierarchy. If it is going to be stored in the form of a storage account, it should be like the account name, container, directory, individual file. So what is the file that you are dealing with? That is called a data set. If it is a database, then what's the server name? Where it is located? What's the database name? What's the table? That I can call it as a data set here. So linked service is the connection string that I can used to access my data sets. Data set is my source and destination of a data. Okay, and then I'm saying that using this data, connect to the data, implement some activity. Okay, so what data I need to implement? Do I need to copy the data? This is copying a data from web sir, and loading sir, the data to you. Sir, here yes. I am the uh, yes. While doing the ingestion process, uh, can we connect the multiple resources at the time? 
yes you can, you can implement a flow you can even collect the data from multiple sources let me explain you with an example so that you can get it say i can get the data from a sales table one in one database i can get the data from a customer table in another database i can get the data from my blob storage in one form i can use a merge can you see the merge transformation here in transformation just an example i'm saying that merge and load the data into table okay or into a warehouse so all the data collected from the customer table sales table and a different table you can load it into one destination you can do that then it is possible yes it is possible okay okay but you cannot directly copy the data you can you have to use some transformation here because i am collecting the data from multiple sources see you can implement a flow whatever the way you want the data to get okay Sir, your multiple sources means uh, different platforms like SQL, RDMS, uh, like any R platform. Ninety plus connectors. I told you, right? You uh, can collect some po some portion of a data from SQL, SQL some yeah. portion of a data from Azure Storage, some portion of a data from AWS, some portion of data from a different place. You can get the data from multiple sources. Okay, sir. Okay, and you can join all the data and then load the data into your destination. That is possible. Okay. And then, so is it clear? In, if you identify this example here, what this example is doing is, it is directly reading the data from a web portal. Okay. And then it is writing the data into my storage account. This is first activity. What is this activity called? So, so linked service is how to connect to the website how to access the data maybe this website is asking me some username and a password like you your gmail to access the data that is located in a web portal and whatever the data i collected from a web portal i'm loading into my storage account so while storing the data into the storage account i have to provide the details again like the connection strings are an access key so that is called linked server where to store the data in a storage account? In a storage account, container, folder, folder and files. in which file? So that is called your data set. What is your end point, uh, end storage? Okay, that is called your data set. Activity here is copy the data. What I am saying here is fetch the data from a website and load the data into a storage account. So what I am doing here? Copying, copying, the, data data copying the data from a website. From a this is my yeah. website, right? And I'm <laughs> copying the data into a storage account, ADLS maybe. Okay, Azure storage. Okay, so what I'm doing here is copy data. Go here, fetch the data and load the data into ADLS. So it is doing a copy data here. And next activity, what is the second activity here? Transform. Collect. So what it was saying is connect to ADLS fetch that file which is collected from a website, do the transformations, change the transformations, okay. means convert the data, whatever they want, and load the data into database or a data warehouse. This symbol is related to Synapse. Okay, so what I'm saying is the table is already there. Fetch the data, do some changes, whatever the changes you need to define here. And once the data is changed, load the data into a table in <coughs> Stuck data there. warehouse okay so second step i'm doing some transformations here post transformations load the data into your table so this is an activity here so one step it was doing copy data second step it was doing transforming the data. transformations right and then it loads the data so activity means operation that it was performing one operation it was doing a copy one operation, it was doing some transformations. Like this, you can schedule a sequence of operations here. What operations you want to carry out, that operation is called an activity. Any pipeline can have minimum one activity, or you can write a pipeline with multiple activities as well. Collection of all these activities together called, what is this one? It was called pipeline. as an pipeline. collection of all these activities. We can call pipeline. it with the name as an pipeline. pipeline. So I'm defining a pipeline here. 
sir uh, suppose uh, if it is a unstructured data uh, the transformation no level it will matter whatever it is <laughs> okay yeah unstructured you can transformation means can many things here i am not only saying that yeah one of an example is converting your unstructured to structured that is one transformation you can do a variety of transformations as well transformation can be anything your source data is the end user data that we are receiving convert into the customer required format no matter whatever you are doing here you may be doing a multiple list of things okay and don't worry about it i am going to list out all the transformations that we can perform using kdf and we will be doing all those things practically as yes, with different different data sets so you can really understand the meaning of transformation and what are the purpose of each and every transformation that we are implementing Okay, at this point of time, if you understand the definition, that's fine. So, is it clear now? What is a pipeline? What is an activity collection of activities? It's called a pipeline. Okay, activity is one single task or an operation that we are performing. For performing these operations, whenever you need a data, I can collect to the data source and destination of a data is called a data set. For connecting to the source destination, I might be needing some credentials. that credentials is called a linked services okay and for working with this pipelines i have triggers okay triggers are mainly used for automation scheduling automation scheduling automation there are variety of triggers that's why we can see different <laughs> different option there are variety of triggers to implement an automation of your activities okay so this is what we can call it as an triggers okay so these are all the components you madan you asked me right how to implement these are all the components for an adf here okay <clears throat> for working with an adf so finally goal is uh, to load the data into synapse right sir uh, see to load the data somewhere data should be there either it can i cannot say it's always a synapse a synapse is a costly service it's yeah. up to you okay Uh, like it can be a SQL data warehouse or a SQL database. Okay. In in DataBricks, we have a concept. How companies are evolving in terms of a storage, okay? Means we will discuss. I am not confusing you, but I am giving you a clear picture. Twenty before twenty years, where are we going to store the data? How are we organizing the data? Till today, how it was adapted? How it was changed? you need to go through this complete process even data warehouse is not good nowadays every structure has its advantages and disadvantages okay i have i have already a document i am covering for another batch don't worry i am going to cover all these things i don't want to confuse you because we go on an order but see here why we need to store the data what all the different ways to store the data earlier days we used this infrastructure normal um Uh, sorry i was deviating a bit but i am want to cover you here and then we used this concept called individually silos data warehouses even data warehouses are not good we have a new concept called data lake houses okay limitations what are the problems of storing the data in a data warehouse and there comes a new concept called data lake and even data lake has some disadvantages finally we got some concept called delta lake which is a recent future here data lake was further upgraded to delta lakes okay so i am going to cover this in data bricks while starting the data bricks to give you a real understanding of what is the best way if you in order to answer your question where are we going to finally store the data it's not at decided in adf you need to come to that azure data bricks to understand what are the different ways that we are storing the data what is our journey from the past 20 years to the latest one called delta lake delta lake is always the best option for you okay at this point of a time it's uh, the words itself is confusing for you you don't need the don't know the meaning of it but in our course i'm making sure that i'm going to cover all that one set concepts so you will understand the architecture of delta lake and we work with delta lakes in data bricks as well okay so these are dots you can connect all the dots by the end of your course don't worry okay so final destination is 
at this point of time, assume that it's a data warehouse, but there are so more powerful technologies than data warehouse. Data warehouse has a lot of disadvantages. At this point of a time, Delta, how oh, Delta Lake storage is a new future, which was recently introduced. Okay. Delta Lake is much, 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 much powerful than your data warehouses in terms of storing. So we might consider Delta Lake houses. Okay. I will work, I will show you practically how to create a, the Delta Lakes and work with your Delta Lakes as well. Don't worry about it. Okay. So does it answer your question at this point of attack? Yes. Okay. People know us only till data warehouse because that's the one we are implementing now, but there are four, far more advanced tools that we can implement as well. Okay. So I will stop it here for today. I don't want to confuse you too much. Tomorrow I will cover this linked services, data sets and everything. We will install, we'll start the practical tomorrow. We are going to install ADF and create one sample pipeline to cover all the elements. So our journey starts now with the practical session. Too much of theory for now, okay? I don't want to confuse you by showing all the things. Let the practical be done. Then we will discuss about all these operations here. Okay, I will explain all these things. Install, create an ADF practically. Create pipelines, create data sets, and I will show you how to copy the data. Tomorrow we'll do one exercise. We are going to do a lot of exercises with ADF until you are comfortable. Okay, because most of your interview lies on ADF. Okay. Okay. So any doubts, anyone?